Last summer, I decided to pack my bags and head north to Canada's Arctic for a 10-month working holiday in the territory of Nunavut. As the traditional homeland of Canada's Inuit peoples, Nunavut was incorporated in 1999 and is Canada's newest territory. So sit back and join me as I take you around some of the highlights of Canada's Central Arctic. Well, hey everybody, I am here in Rankin Inlet, Nunavut on my layover. I'm connecting onward to Baker Lake, Nunavut today. So gonna be spending two incredible days in the heart of Canada, right in the geographical center of the country. Population, I think about 1800 people. So Baker Lake is the only inland community in Nunavut. So this is gonna be incredible not on the ocean really they have a lake there I guess but it's not on the ocean so very different in terms of adapting to the environment and so forth looking forward to checking out Baker Lake I've never been there before so I can't wait to check it out it's gonna be 20 degrees all weekend when it was only about 10 degrees back in Arviat and only about 10 degrees here in Rankin so definitely looking forward to some summer vibes as I travel to the heart of Nunavut and to the heart of Canada All right, I've made it here to Baker Lake, Nunavut. Very beautiful place, right on the lakeside here. Cute town. It's actually a much more picturesque setting than I anticipated. Really pretty. It's a huge lake. And you can see it's quite a substantial town there in the distance. It stretches about, well, maybe three kilometers. And this is the airport, Baker Lake Airport. Never been here before. Uh, I'm waiting for the lodge. Nice coming in here too. The landing was pretty spectacular. It's a huge lake, eh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they forget it's not Hudson's Bay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And how long have you lived here? I am just the relief manager. Okay. I'm just filling a gap. Okay. And where are you from then? Uh, I was born and raised in Marshall, Manitoba. So okay. That is an hour and a half southeast of Winnipeg. So I guess it must be just be busy in the summer, hey, with all the boats and everything else? Um, wow. Boats a little bit on the shore. You know what? I've seen that dock used mostly for when the barges come oh, in. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the chefs come in on a little tug and they come and pick up some fresh yeah. produce here, either at the northern or the co-op store that's just yeah. over there. That's the most I've seen that dock okay. uh, being used. I've picked up some, some guys coming off the boats yeah. or going on to um, in their ships. Hmm. Yeah. There's another main street. Oh, okay. Kind of That's the main, other main road. road. There's another main road that parallels sure, this Sure, okay. They call that the, the up road or yeah. the, the way up road. So there's okay. the schools, the um, uh, hamlet building, yeah. all that stuff is on, on that okay. main street. Here. We just passed the... Um, there's the lodge. Cool. Uh, we just passed the health center, KIA building is in front of us. Yeah. And this... Is the lodge. Great, thank you. All right, I'm checking into my room here at the Nunumiat Lodge. Got a lot of keys going on here. There we go. All right. So, this is my room. Wow, it's actually pretty comfortable. So, you can see here a little kitchenette, I guess. Keurig, that's always a good touch. 
little fridge microwave. She says she upgraded me to this room. I was actually supposed to stay at the Igloo Hotel, which is the cheaper property, uh, but she honored the same rate, so not bad. And there's my little bed. Not much for blackout curtains though. Work area right over here, a little desk, lamp, telephone, television, pretty standard. But to be honest with you guys, this is actually out of this world for none of it. This is crazy. And yeah, a bit dated bathroom, but boy, this is functional and pretty snazzy. So this hotel room was $299 plus tax per night. So $314 per night with tax. So definitely not really a budget property, but this is none of it. This is remote Arctic Canada, and I'm glad to be here even at any price. And I guess one of the unexpected surprises, but not necessarily surprising, of being in a hotel in Nunavut is that it doesn't seem to work. So I tried the valves, they're open, so I don't think this is supplying any water and they probably should look into this. So the Nunamiat Lodge includes round trip airport transportation. So that saves about 20 bucks, a small discount, I suppose, off the $627 room. But my room is up there on the second floor. So it is actually a pretty incredible structure by none of its standards. Double decker hotel. So that's pretty cool. This is by far the most comfortable hotel in Baker Lake. So I'm glad that they moved me up here for the night from the Inns North uh, Igloo Hotel, which is the lower end property in town. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a little walk here around Baker Lake. It's about eh, 10 o'clock at night. So pretty much everything is closed at this point, but I'm gonna do my best to eh, just take a gander, orient myself to the community. I only got about 36 or so hours here. So I'm gonna spend them wisely. Luckily I'm at the peak of June here, just about a week before the summer solstice. So days are going to be long and I'm going to be able to check out as much as I can of Baker Lake while I'm here. So I'm going to be heading down here towards the co-op store, which is just about 600 meters up the road. Get myself a snack and a refreshment at least before bed. Beautiful night though. It's about 18 degrees Celsius, which is unheard of in Nunavut for this time of year. Back home in Arviat, it's only about 10 degrees. So Rankin was even only about 10 degrees, so it's actually really hot here by uh, Arctic standards. So it looks like this is the local health center, which I hope I don't need during my time here. And I just walk down towards the shoreline here at night and check out some of the beautiful views of Baker Lake. Not sure what building this is, but pretty substantial community though. I'm actually really surprised at just how built up it is and yeah, populated. It feels bigger than Arviat, which is, it's not, it's objectively not bigger, but it feels bigger. Tons of skidoos just sitting out there on the ice, just waiting to fall through. That is gutsy on, a, especially on during weather like this. I guess there is fresh water on their side as it's going to be a little bit harder to melt, but still in these temperatures i would not put my fourteen thousand dollar skidoo out there so yeah, definitely enjoying my time here so far perfect weather like absolutely perfect by every measure very very agreeable weather it's just neutral it's just it's not hot it's not cold it's perfect spring weather so definitely glad i chose baker lake and i'm glad it worked out uh to come out here i actually had COVID-19 uh, around the end of may I was forced to cancel this trip. So I'm very thankful to the very generous customer service staff at Calm Air for rebooking me free of charge, even though there was no award ticket space available, which is how I got down here. Uh, they rebooked me despite there being no room. So very happy to uh, have rearranged my travel, so to speak, and coming on such a beautiful weekend here for two nights. Gonna be a little bit more expensive because my original plan was just to come for one night, but definitely two nights never hurt anybody. So the traditional name for Baker Lake is Kamanituak. So a lot of Nunavut communities have actually changed their name to their traditional Inuit name, as they probably should, of course. Uh, it's an act of, I suppose, decolonization and removing the Eurocentric influence. But uh, this community has retained its name of Baker Lake, so they don't go by Kamanituak 
legally, I suppose, or officially. It's still Baker Lake for the time being. But there's other communities like Repulse Bay that have changed over to Nowyat in recent years. And I think uh, Kinggate is, uh, used to be called Cape Dorset. They've changed their name. So a lot of name changes happening in Nunavut. And I wouldn't be surprised if this community becomes uh, Ka I forgot the name of it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if this community becomes Kamanituak on the map in coming years. We'll see. And I'm very surprised to see that they have a swimming pool here. Like that is absolutely incredible. Arviat sure doesn't have one and it's uh, much bigger than Baker Lake. So very surprising. It's pretty dead on the streets though at this late hour, but I'm enjoying the evening stroll for sure on this Friday night. Beautiful sunny weather, even at 10.30 at night. It's a pretty unique igloo type church here. Right in the center of town, so really cool. My goodness, that's like a Nuktitut script all over the front of it. Very unique church. Wow, Sunday service, Sunday school. Looks abandoned at this point, but wow. Cool to see some uh, history here in the center of Baker Lake. Really cool building. So you can kind of make it out there. It says Christ or Christian Fellowship Hall. It's definitely an old building. I'm not sure what year this was built, but very historical by the looks of it. All but abandoned at this point. Whew. Gorgeous night. So this is the Inns North Igloo Hotel. This is where I was supposed to spend the night, but uh, evidently they are having some sort of heating issue or I'm not sure, plumbing issue? Can't remember what she said, but in any case, can't stay here. So they put me up in the better hotel down the road. So same price, but that's the Igloo Hotel. $299 a night as well. So definitely getting a deal at the other property. And like every community in Nunavut, there is a local co-op. This one is actually quite thriving, I was told, uh, unlike the one in Arviat that it's deeply in debt and nobody shops at. So I'm gonna actually check this place out tomorrow. It's probably gonna be a bit more inspiring than the one back home. Pretty good size. And it looks like it also has a branch of the First Nations National Bank, which is um, quite common here in Nunavut. So this is the Jesse Unark Art Center and Gallery. And this is actually an artist's studio. I'm hoping they're going to be open tomorrow. They should be open on Saturdays uh, based on my phone call that I made to them. But I've heard rumors that the shopkeepers, I guess, are out of town and so forth. So might not happen. Anyway, I'm going to go head up here to get a late night refreshment at the only store that's open in town right now. And that would be the Quick Stop just down the street. All right, I made it over here to the Northern store, which I'll check out tomorrow. But right next door here is the Quick Stop, which is the local convenience store that's open at 11 o'clock at night, thankfully. It looks like they also have a KFC and a Tim Hortons, just like Arviat, so pretty thriving place. I'm actually really surprised. Not a bad community. I'd actually live here in a heartbeat. Pretty cool. So it looks like they do have a second art gallery here in Baker Lake. I'm gonna take down that number just to see if I can actually visit that. Enjoying an ice cap. Pretty cheap too. This is only same price as Arby at like 350. Nothing. Altogether a bottle of orange juice plus the ice cap cost me only about six bucks, so it was actually pretty reasonable. Baker Lake's new visitor center, I guess. Akumalik Visitor Center. I guess it's not open yet. It's opens on the 17th of June, I guess. I'm a week early but at least I found it. And this is the old Hudson Bay Company trading post here in Baker Lake. So Baker Lake actually does connect with a river that leads all the way down to the Hudson Bay. So it's about a hundred kilometers or so inland from the Hudson Bay. Beautiful night here. Oh my goodness. I tell you, it's pretty freeing to actually be walking around here without having to worry about polar bears or any, you know, wildlife. They might have grizzlies somewhere around here. I don't, never heard of that before though. So definitely freeing in a sense to be walking around an inland town here in Nunavut and just exploring what it has to offer. I mean, it's historic. It is such a shame that this place is closed for the season. I'd love to go inside and check it out. I've heard it's actually well worth a visit, so. Unfortunate that I'm missing it by one week. 
That's life, I guess. All right, so I'm walking down here to the shoreline of Baker Lake. It's still pretty icy. And just behind me in this direction, that's the visitor center, which again is closed, and the co-op over there. But yeah, this is the shoreline right here in the heart of downtown Baker Lake. So it's actually real sand here, like legitimate sand. I'm actually quite shocked right on the lakefront here in Baker Lake. Absolutely serene setting here in Baker Lake. I'm very impressed with this community so far. Can't wait to explore it more in the daytime tomorrow. It'll be my only full day here, but uh, definitely enjoying the time I have to stroll here by the lakefront and just enjoy the town after, you know, everybody's went to bed really. It just, it's very peaceful here tonight. That is about it for me tonight, unfortunately. I'm gonna to try to get an early start tomorrow, but uh, I'm all out of space here on my memory cards. I gotta head back to the hotel, do a photo dump, and call it a night. I will see you in the morning for more explorations of Nunavut's only inland community.